Right now, live at 5, authorities have revealed what led up to the 20-hour standoff in Duluth Friday. What we know tonight. Plus, Minnesota state leaders hear about challenges from women in the workforce. Meanwhile, community members have a chance to weigh in as the Duluth School District considers selling one of its buildings. A course about COVID-19, why students are learning about the pandemic. You're watching Live at 5 on Live Local CBS3. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Kristen Bakke. Police exchanged gunfire three times with the suspect in Friday's deadly Duluth standoff. The BCA released new details about that incident today. CBS 3's Emma Quinn breaks down what happened. Kristen, the BCA gave more insight into exactly what happened during the 20-hour standoff and named the nine officers and deputies who fired their weapons. As we already knew, DPD responded to the home at the 23rd Avenue and West 4th Street around 8.30 on reports of a domestic incident. The BCA now says after talking with a woman in the home, they weren't sure if an assault happened. They identified the man involved as 37-year-old David Conwell, who had felony warrants out for his arrest. They went into the home to arrest him, but the BCA says the officers didn't know Conwell was armed. According to the agency, the officers found him hiding in a closet. That's when he pulled out a shotgun and fired at them, hitting and killing K-9 Luna. The officers fired back as they retreated, but don't think Conwell was hit. That's when the standoff started. According to the BCA, the Duluth Tactical Response Team tried again to arrest Conwell at 3 a.m., but had to retreat when he f again fired at them. Authorities tried to use chemical irritants to get Conwell to come out. Then at 4 p.m. Friday, the St. Louis County Sheriff's Emergency Response Team learned Conwell was in a closet. They removed a section of the wall there. The BCA says Conwell jumped through the hole onto the porch and pointed his handgun at the deputies. ERT members fired back, fatally shooting Conwell. He died at the scene. Now, the BCA is still investigating the incident. When they're done, they'll pass their findings off to the St. Louis County Attorney. He'll then determine if the use of force was justified. All right, thanks, Emma. And the BCA also identified the nine officers who fired their weapons during the standoff. Five are with the Duluth Police Department. Four are on the county's emergency response team. All of the Duluth officers are on standard leave. Two ERT members are on leave as they fired uh, lethal rounds. The other two are not on leave because they fired non-lethal rounds. We have their names and more on their history in law enforcement on our website, cbs3duluth.com. Minnesota is expected to get its first shipment of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine soon. State health officials say more than 45,000 doses of the newly approved COVID-19 vaccine should arrive this week. They placed an order for the single-dose vaccine Sunday night. Officials say it usually takes a couple of days for processing and shipping. The health department calling it a game changer. Yesterday we reported Wisconsin will also receive 47,000 doses of the J&J vaccine next week. You can find more information on available appointments on our website. Meanwhile, Duluth hospital leaders are sounding the alarm about what they call a dangerous trend. The leaders of Essential Health and St. Luke's held a virtual press conference today. They say since the start of the pandemic, people have been either skipping or delaying needed care, likely out of fear of catching the virus. Dr. John Pryor with Essentia called this trend a recipe for disaster. He says more people will die because preventative or curable conditions are not being caught as early. No doubt, at some point in the past year, you felt COVID fatigue and you are not alone. For students at Hibbing Community College, that feeling is all part of a lesson in understanding the pandemic's impacts on our lives. CBS 3's Kendall Jarbo takes us inside a new course helping students understand our new world. So what they do in terms of a pandemic, and at some point this will level. Ken Strugel has taught at Hibbing Community College for 35 years. By the way, this maximum value is called the carrying capacity. He's watched the college change over time, never more so than during the pandemic. But the rate of increase is lower. Strugel navigated uncharted territory, taking his classes um, online and learning a new vocabulary. Social distancing and, and sheltering in place 
And from my perspective, I heard the term flattening the curve. And of course, the bells went off in my head. We have, in essence, flattened the curve. The mathematics instructor wanted to help his students understand the pandemic, and he wasn't alone. I thought about this for a while, and I thought, I can't imagine my colleagues in the other disciplines not thinking the same way I was, which was, how can I incorporate the pandemic into the specific content for their courses? Strugel pitched the idea, and eight faculty members created a new course. COVID-19, a study of a global pandemic, covers coronavirus from various disciplines. The mathematics of pandemics, how, it inter how that intersects with the economy, what it's doing to our social networks, our physical status, our emotional status. Laura Perendo teaches medical laboratory science. Her lectures focus on the immune system and how the body reacts to COVID. And for my section, I'm gonna share with you kind of an overview of the immune system and then how the immune system responds to COVID. It's another critical lesson in understanding the pandemic as a whole. So breaking the class up like this in sections really brings each of these to the forefront for, for these students. COVID course is entirely online. Instructors upload lectures for the 27 students in the class to watch at their own pace. Students like Mariah Woods, a single mom of two kids, Woods moved across the country to study nursing just before the pandemic hit. Coming to a new place and needing that social interaction to meet people and then kind of having that halted is not the funnest thing. <laughs> Woods was initially apprehensive about taking the class, already suffering from COVID fatigue. Is that something that I was really wanting to get myself into? The course turned her fatigue into excitement. Finding that I was more being educated and not just told what I need to think and expect from COVID and um, society and all of that, that changed my perspective on this class. Strugel hopes students like Woods will understand pandemics of the past and how they impact the future. They can have an intelligent conversation about a pandemic and how it's affecting not only them, but how it's affecting society and the world in general. And what do the mitigation strategies do? They flatten the curve. Learning about the pandemic hasn't just prepared Woods for her career in nursing. It's shown her she's on the right path. That's where I want to be. So there's no question that that's what I want to go into and still help others. Helping others recover tomorrow with lessons learned today. The COVID class is almost halfway through the 17-week course. Strugel says they'll likely offer it again in the fall as faculty have already expressed interest in doing it again. FBI Director Christopher Wray is in the hot seat today testifying before the Senate Judiciary Committee over intelligence failures leading up to the January 6th insurrection of the U.S. Capitol. Director Wray condemned the violence on the Capitol and defended the FBI's handling of the information that indicated that an attack was possible on January 6th. Senators questioned him over the intelligence shared by the Bureau's field office the day before the attack, which showed threats of violence on social media. So this was a, uh, what's called a situational information report. It was prepared by our Norfolk field office, specifically for dissemination. It was, as you noted, uh, raw, unverified, uncorroborated information uh, that had been posted online. The FBI director says Americans need to speak up when they know someone might be planning an attack. Well, Dave is here for our first look at the weather. Dave, I went for an outdoor run this morning in just a long sleeve shirt. It's March. I can't <laughs> believe it. <laughs> I think I used to run back in the 80s. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> Congrats to you. Weather Thank wasn't you. too bad for it. No, you know, it should stay fair for the next week for the most part. For a small part tonight, though, there could be a little bit of a rain and snow mix. We've got a big high-pressure system covering Minnesota, Wisconsin, and the UP. But running along the Canadian border is a small low-pressure system going up and over that. And so the bottom line, there is a 20% chance for some flurries for the Minnesota border with Canada and into the Upper Peninsula as well. But taking a live look right now up towards Grand Ray, it looks like nothing's happening there. And if it does happen, again, it's only a 20% chance and should be gone 
on by Wednesday as the high flexes its muscles and takes over the sky, keeping, thing mostly, keeping things mostly sunny and warm for the longest of times. And I'll talk about how long that time will be in more detail in a few more minutes. Thanks, Dave. Still to come on Live at 5, Evelis Police Chief is retiring. His message to the community he served coming up in City by City. And tonight at 6, UMD receives a huge research grant, how it will impact mines on the Iron Range. You're watching Live at 5 with Kristen Vaki and weather with meteorologist Dave Anderson on Live Local CBS 3. When severe weather hits, tune to CBS 3 for up-to-date coverage morning and night. Tackle tough jobs with Bosch Power Tools from Menards. Bosch packs the performance and features you need to get the job done right. That's why Bosch is the choice of pros. Plus, Menards has all the bits, blades, and power tool accessories from Bosch you need to get the job done. This 10-inch 40-tooth carbide tip circular saw blade is just $24.99 after 11% rebate. Get 11% off everything now at Menards. Save big money at Menards. The View at Bluestone is leasing studio, one, two, and three-bedroom pet-friendly apartments for summer of 2021. With beautiful apartments featuring custom wood cabinets, oversized windows and balconies, and an array of luxury amenities, we'd love to have you here with us. We're excited to show you our progress. Schedule a hard hat tour today at viewatbluestone.com. Funerals can be emotionally devastating for a family to go through. Besides the sorrow, loved ones are left with the high cost of arranging a funeral. Funeral Advantage was formed to help protect your family when they need it most. It pays your loved ones up to $20,000 immediately for funeral and any other expenses. It's a good feeling to know that my family will be taken care of if anything happens to me. Funerals can easily cost $9,000 or more, but government benefits pay only $255, leaving your loved ones to pay the rest. It's so easy, just answer a few simple health questions. This is so affordable, even for someone like me who's on a fixed income. If you're 40 to 85, get information on how to protect your family. Funeral Advantage is something we all need. There's no risk or obligation. Call now. Get the facts about how easy it is to protect your family. There's no risk or obligation. Don't wait. Call the number on your screen now. If you love them enough to crawl into a play place to get them to come down, then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat. Welcome back to the CBS 3 News Live at 5. Here's a live look from Spirit Mountain on this Tuesday. Dave will be in with this week's forecast in just a few minutes. But first, let's take a look around the region. Evelis Police Chief is retiring and changes could be coming to Fond du Lac Trails. All of that and more as we take you around the Northland, city by city. Starting off on the Iron Range, after 30 years of service, Evelyn's police chief is retiring. Tim Koivinen led the department since 2012. He worked in Virginia for almost two decades before that. In an email to CBS3, Koivinen said he wishes his team the best and thanks the city of Eveleth for their support. He said one chapter of his life is coming to an end and he is looking forward to the next. The city council will vote on posting the open position at tonight's meeting. Now to the Fond du Lac State Forest in Carleton County where recreational trails could be getting some modifications. The trails are popular among off-highway vehicle users, hunters, and cross-country skiers. The Minnesota DNR is considering what the trails should be used for, the amenities connected to them, and if any, should be closed. They invite people to give their input virtually on March 11th. Now over to Wisconsin, where in honor of Read Across America, the Superior Library wants to see you reading. They're building an online gallery along with other Wisconsin libraries. You can submit a photo reading to each other with your pets uh, by a Wisconsin landmark and more. We have their email on our website, cbs3duluth.com. If there's something going on in your neighborhood that you think we should know about, send us an email and it might be featured as we go around the Northland, city by city. Still to come on Live at 5, one year into the pandemic, we're looking at how working women have been affected. 
Much warmer than normal today. The norm is 29. We hit 43 at the airport in Duluth. Tomorrow will be a little bit cooler than that, probably mid to upper 30s, but still warmer than normal. And that'll be the story we talk about for about a week. Any rain chances coming around in that week? I'll show you the seven day coming up right after the break. Itasca has a really good reputation because it is the best place to start. The teachers really connect to you on a different level, and I think that that is something very important. The teachers do a really good job of not just making it some boring sit down, take notes type of thing. They have lots of different ways to help you learn because they know that people don't learn just one way. They found ways to find applicable things to what we're learning to the outside world. That's made it super fun. So when people ask me how my day was, every single day was great. Whatever your water worry, Culligan Water can help. With over 40 filtration systems, including the world's best softener, no one filters more than Culligan Water, the only water that comes with a van. Contact Culligan, the local water experts. Find the home of your dreams with Homes by Edmonds. Whether you're buying or selling, trust Duluth's oldest real estate company, Homes by Edmonds LLP. Sunday mornings at 1030 on CBS3. Now's the time to get a great deal on select Kubota compact and subcompact tractors. Our reliable number one selling tractors are designed for easy operation and feature all the performance match detachments needed to tackle any job. Right now, get zero down at 0% APR for 60 months, plus save up to $1,000. No one serves you better than when severe weather hits, tune to CBS 3 for up-to-date coverage morning and night. Every day during your birthday month, you can receive up to $30 in club cash. When you had questions, CBS 3 was there with answers. Working together with regional media outlets to serve our local communities. Doing what we do best. When questions arise, tune to the local station. Live, local, CBS 3. Local news and local weather here on CBS 3. Now, the CBS 3 Duluth WeatherMax forecast with meteorologist Dave Anderson. So we showed you the temperature, the high for Duluth Airport a few minutes ago. It was in the 40s. A lot of the rest of the region followed suit here today. Hit 46 International Falls, 48 towards or mid 40s from Hibbing in through Coleraine and up to 47 by Grand Rapids. Mid 40s on Park Point and Superior. See, Moose Lake got there too. Lower 40, Solon Springs, Hayward and Ashland and Ironwood. Nothing to sneeze at and even 40 in Waters Meet is still better than normal by 11 degrees. Tomorrow, the warm spell continues, though we'll drop into the mid to upper 30s for a lot of towns. But in general, we stay warm for the next week ahead. And by the weekend, actually, we may spike with spring-like temperatures, which I'll show you with the seven-day forecast. And in between, it's going to be fairly dry. Slight chance for some sprinkles tonight for some towns. We may have to wait a week for the next batch. Right now, at the airport, it's 42. West wind going 17 miles per hour. Still staying windy, at least for the next couple of hours. Air pressure, 29.71 inches of mercury, 1,006 millibars. It's actually a touch on the lower side, despite a high within the vicinity. That little low running the border here is knocking down barometer readings, at least temporarily. Current temperatures, low 40s in the Upper Peninsula, low to mid 40s for our friends in Wisconsin, with the high point being superior at 44. Minnesota numbers have achieved 45 for the current in Moose Lake and Silver Bay's there as well. Otherwise, low to mid 40s for the Iron Ranges and Border Country. And low temps tonight likely will be in the 20s above zero. Boy, that cold snap with your polar vortex sure seems like a distant memory now, doesn't it? Well, let's take a look at the current Doppler and satellite map here for our region. And we've got that lower pressure system up towards our north scooting along the border. It's been creating a few clouds and there's already been a few little uh, sprinkles of snow along border country and into the upper peninsula. 
And that could continue tonight, 20% chance. If you haven't seen it yet, you will as the night goes on, as that lower pressure system rides up and over the big high that's going to dominate our sky for the most part through the weekend with a, a mostly sunny sky and temperatures warmer than normal. If not the mid-30s, then perhaps even into the mid-40s by the weekend. And I'll show you that now here with our extended forecast. Tonight, a lot of 20s in Minnesota, but towards the Iron Ranges and border country, we could dip into the teens. So in general, a range of 15 inland to 25 by the lake. Partly cloudy for most of us, but border country could get a little bit of flurry activity, maybe even mixed in with some rain showers. It's warmer aloft right now. Partly cloudy sky for Wisconsin could combine with a few flurries in the UP to bring that mix to those folks there with low temps going about 21 to 25. For tomorrow, mostly sunny sky asserts itself again. It chases away that little low and we become clear and the high temps run from 33 in the UP to 40 down by Hayward. So warmer than normal for all zones, just not as warm as today. Minnesota highs tomorrow with a mostly sunny sky should run about 32 towards Grand Marais to as warm as 40 down around Moose Lake. And now here's that extended forecast and it stays sunny for the most part through Sunday, Monday. Pretty warm by Sunday, Monday too with 45 out there. Then Tuesday is our next chance for precip. Finally, you know, if you don't get enough tonight with a 20% chance for a few flurries, we get a 40% chance for rain on Tuesday. And I do think rain rather than snow because we'll have highs in the lower 40s still. Wow, that is a true heat wave for March, in my opinion. Yeah, this might be even more significant than last week's. All right, we'll have to keep an eye on it. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Dave. March marks one year since the COVID-19 pandemic began. Hard to believe. In the last year, we've seen shutdowns, businesses shuttering, and layoffs. While it's had an impact on the nation's entire workforce, Minnesota leaders say it's especially hit women hard. CBS 3's Emma Quinn sat in on a roundtable discussion this morning to hear the struggles some are facing around the state. In an effort to build back Minnesota's economy, state leaders heard from women in the workforce Tuesday morning about struggles they've faced since the beginning of the pandemic. The roundtable discussion was hosted by Lieutenant Governor Peggy Flanagan and Deed Commissioner Steve Grove. Some of the challenges women included during this discussion were inadequate child care, paid leave, flexible work schedules, and financial struggles of first-time business owners. We have seen Almost 600,000 women applied for unemployment insurance in the last year. Many of those who sat in on the call were female business owners and community organizations focused on women's growth in the workforce. Minnesota state leaders say they will continue these roundtable discussions in the future in an effort to create a more equitable economy for women in the state. Deed officials say women in the black, indigenous, people of color community, especially black women, have been hit the hardest by job loss due to the pandemic. Coming up tonight at 6, we'll take a deeper look at some of the data surrounding women in the workforce during the COVID-19 pandemic. Still to come, anti-racism efforts in the Northland. Learn about UMD's goal for this virtual event. And the debate over selling Duluth's historic Old Central continues how you can weigh in. You already know that Cary Toyota and Superior is a great place to buy and service your vehicle. But we have a lot more to offer every driver and not just people with Toyotas. We have the Yakima line of products for the adventure seekers, including roof racks, bike and kayak racks, and cargo carriers. We also have running boards, bed steps, and access brand tonneau covers like I put on my truck. And for those of you who like a clean vehicle, we have professional detailing services and all-weather floor liners from Toyota and WeatherTech. Carry Toyota and Superior, we have something for every driver. Shopping for a new kitchen at Skips has never been better. Take home your dream kitchen today with Skips' new Glenwood and White Cabinet. Enjoy freedom and flexibility with your own movable island today. You can rely on Skips for quality and durability at affordable prices. Stop by with your measurements and see how you can take home beautifully painted or stained cabinets today at a truly affordable price. Visit us online at skipshomecenter.com or stop in to see our showroom at 4728 Rice Lake Road, Duluth. Funerals can be emotionally devastating for a family to go through. Besides the sorrow, loved ones are left with the high cost of arranging a funeral. Funeral Advantage was formed to help protect your family when they need it most. It pays your loved ones up to $20,000 immediately for funeral and any other expenses. It's a good feeling to know that my family will be taken care of if anything happens to me. 
Funerals can easily cost $9,000 or more, but government benefits pay only $255, leaving your loved ones to pay the rest. It's so easy, just answer a few simple health questions. This is so affordable, even for someone like me who's on a fixed income. If you're 40 to 85, get information on how to protect your family. Funeral Advantage is something we all need. There's no risk or obligation. Call now. Get the facts about how easy it is to protect your family. There's no risk or obligation. Don't wait. Call the number on your screen now. With over 30 years of providing the best service in the Northland, Ogston's Body and Paint has built their reputation through honesty and respect. So when bad things happen to your vehicle, trust Ogston's to make them right again. Hi, I'm Steve Little with Bath Planet. It's time to welcome the new year with the bath of your dreams. With our Say Goodbye to 2020 sale, we're offering 20% off labor, 20% off material, and no interest, no payment, and zero down until 2022. All of our products are backed with the Good Housekeeping seal of approval and a lifetime warranty. For a free estimate, call us today or visit us online at bathplanet.com. Bath Planet, out of this world service, down to earth price. Epilepsy can affect anyone with a brain. It does not discriminate. If you have a brain, you can get epilepsy. But here's something that's just as important to know. Anyone with a brain can affect epilepsy. So let's use our brains to do just that. Let's change the way people think about epilepsy. To find cures. Because if all of us can get epilepsy. All of us can end epilepsy. We just need to use our brains. Let's use our brains. Let's, let's use, use our brains. brains. Let's use our brains to end epilepsy. UMD is hosting its annual summit on anti-racism. The three-day virtual event starts today. It brings community members, speakers, and social justice groups together to discuss anti-racism efforts in the Northland. The university has been hosting the summit for nearly two decades. The goal is to stress the importance of equality for all. That we acknowledge that this is a lifelong journey of learning and unlearning, healing um, individually and collectively and um, pursuing and enacting transformative and systemic change. The virtual event runs through Thursday. You can find information on how to register on our website. And looking ahead, community members have a chance to weigh in tonight as the Duluth School District considers selling one of its buildings. The board wants to hear people's thoughts on possibly selling historic Old Central High School in downtown Duluth. That's where most of the district's offices and a few programs are held. A 2019 report showed fixing up the building would cost about $48 million. Eventually, a group recommended the board sell it. But a hearing must be held before the board officially decides. The virtual public hearing starts at 6 o'clock tonight. If you'd like to tune in, we have a link on our website, cbs3duluth.com. Coming up on the CBS Evening News, breaking news, the big announcement tonight from the White House about when every American adult can get a vaccine as the state of Texas becomes the largest state in our country to end a mask mandate and lift restrictions. Plus a horrific vehicle accident near the U.S.-Mexico border, more than 13 killed. Why were more than two dozen people crammed into the SUV that crashed? And pandemic pen pals, the special bond between these fourth graders and seniors. That's all tonight here on the CBS Evening News. CBS 3 Closed Captioning is brought to you by Essentia Health. March is Colorectal Cancer Awareness Month. Ask your doctor about screening options. Do you have an idea for an invention, but you don't know what to do next? Call InventHelp. They've been helping inventors for 35 years. InventHelp has helped over 10,000 inventors get patents. You can meet with an InventHelp representative who will keep your idea confidential and explain their invention process step by step. And InventHelp's data bank includes over 9,000 companies who have agreed to review new ideas. Take action and get the help you need from InventHelp. 800-458-9565. Your aviation career is ready for takeoff. Join us for Lake Superior College's Aviation Open House on Friday, March 19th, 3 to 6 p.m. Tour LSC's Center for Advanced Aviation and learn about exciting programs like professional pilot and aviation maintenance technician. RSVP today. At the Lake Superior Zoo School, we are growing wild together. 
Our nature-based program is fully licensed and offers full-time childcare with year-round options. At Zoo School, your child will spend as much time outdoors as possible, learning about the natural world with our values of wonder, integrity, love, and diversity woven into the fabric of each day. Zoo School is for children ages 33 months to five years old. Registration is now open. Sign up today at lszoodeluth.org. Get local vaccine information all at cbs3duluth.com. Fire threatens everything in its path. When it threatens our communities, we respond. We bring the fight to the front line. The Army National Guard stands ready because sometimes the front lines are in our own backyard. We will always be there when our community needs us the most. Find out more about serving your community part-time by visiting NationalGuard.com. Men's Wardrobe provided by Mainstream Fashions for Men. Celebrating 30 years in business in 2021 with 30% off store-wide. Downtown Duluth. Welcome back to the CBS 3 News Live at 5. Here's a live look from Canal Park on this Tuesday evening. Let's take a look back at today's top story and see what's coming up at 6. The BCA gave more insight into what happened during last week's 20-hour standoff and named the nine officers and deputies who fired their weapons. They went into the home to arrest 37-year-old David Conwell, who had felony warrants. Officers didn't know he was armed when they went to arrest him. They found him hiding in a closet when he fired at them with a shotgun, hitting and killing K-9 Luna. And tonight at 6, a crowd lined Superior Streets today to welcome home Morgan Martins, who just won the Junior Iditarod in Alaska. We'll hear from Martins about his experience tonight at 6. That's your news at 5. The CBS Evening News is next. We'll see you at 6.